Hello, my name is Yola Venda and I would like to talk to you today about art. Why is art important? Who should finance it? And where is its place in today's economy? Art has accompanied people for millennia. At some point, humans decided to create objects that did not have any obvious functions other than art. Objects like paintings and sculptures relate to visual arts, but the term art covers a wide spectrum of subjects such as music, dance, literature, theater, and movies. As Margaret Atwood states in her essay, to be creative is in fact Canadian. There are many people participating in the arts by taking art classes, music, or poetry ones. Art plays an important role in our society. In order for the arts to stay vibrant and influential, communities, as well as educational institutions, have to understand its importance and promote it. Government and private agencies have to fund artistic projects and societies have to adjust to new art forms and economic situations. Recognizing the value of art in the communities is very important. As the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights says, Everyone should be freely entitled to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts. In this document, the arts were also seen as a symbol of cultural diversity. This is why the role of an educator in our society is crucial. A well-educated teacher can transfer the values to young generations and can teach the communities the importance of art. It is extremely important to educate people about art and culture, about who they are, so they may fulfill their passions and build better community, community that is aware of its identity. Talking about art generates a big question of funding artistic projects. If we look back into history, art was usually available to a very narrow wealthy society. In today's world, it is hard to imagine that art and culture could be limited to the public at any means. Since 1940, many societies have created public foundations for the arts, and there are new funds that continue to emerge. So when we read Margaret Atwood's text about cutting the public funds on art in Canada, it is easy to understand her disappointment. There are many people involved in art in Canada. Moreover, art is a great part of Canada's economy. Giving art a credit for being a significant part of our lives, we have to admit that art will not exist without funds. The source of money could be private and sponsor great artistic projects, but following Atwood's thinking, governments should be even more obligated to help artists. Lastly, globalization and economic crisis create a new reality for so many aspects of our existence, for art too. According to Mark Ravenhill, about 1990, art was valued, sponsorship was great, and the creative industries were growing. For about two decades, government funding for art uh, was also fantastic. And then he recalls the time when the greatness went down as Titanic sank. However, the same author looks positively into the future that he sees in new forms of art and new forms of funding. To summarize, art and culture are important components of our lives. As the communities develop, more people show interest in artistic activities. Nevertheless, the culture evolves and changes like everything around us. It brings questions and problems to solve. The process of learning and deepening our egos through artistic and cultural experiences seems to be the key to be fulfilled as humans. Thank you for listening.